An army that's backing up is losing. Hello everyone. So it seems like I need to talk about the Kuhn Kewit again. I had a student just this past week comment that in all his searches on the web about Wang Chun, didn't see a lot of people following the ideas of the Kuhn Kuit. For those who don't know, the Kuhn Kuit, Kuhn is fist, Kuit is song or philosophy, so the fight song, the fight philosophy, the root idea. Meet what enters, stick to it and escort it away. Fill the gap or fill the void. You didn't see a lot of Wing Chun folk following that idea. I press it pretty hard. And he wondered, first of all, why? Why? Who can read the minds of others? I would say the first reason why is because there are probably a lot of instructors who don't teach it. There may even be a lot of instructors who don't even know it. I would also suggest that there are a good many that see it as kind of a flowery statement, a flowery idea. And so they don't emphasize it at all, or they don't understand its purpose, its goal, its function. Now, if you watch and look and read about Wing Chun on the internet, you're going to see tons and tons and tons of information about centerline. It's like it's the only thing. All there is is centerline. But it's not. Center line theory, circle theory, triangle theories, immovable elbow theory, the, the list is, it's not really long, but there's more than just one. But to me, above it all, is the Kuhn Kuhn. Meet what enters, stick to it, escort it away, fill the gap. I think one thing that happened People love to punch and kick. They think of punching and kicking from a sparring perspective. A sparring perspective is basically a ring perspective. By that I mean the fight is intentionally elongated, elongated, drawn out over time. Like boxing, stick and move. Move in, get out. Move in, get out. Kyun Q it's saying, no, 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 no. Well, let me back up. I think some people misinterpret the Kyun Q it. They think the fill the gap or fill the void section or statement is when you've stuck to a, an obstacle, you've cleared the path, you've moved it away. They think punch or strike into the void and then get out. But that means you have to do the whole dang thing all over again. That's not what it means. The military, if they go into combat, they don't pop up, shoot, back up, step in, shoot, back up. The goal is to shoot, move in, shoot, move in, shoot, move in. They want to move into the city and occupy it. The police, they've got to move in or bang or or zap. They've got to move in and occupy the perp. Heck, even firefighters squirt water. Move in, 
Squirt more water. Move in until it's snuffed out. Move in. Move in. There are folks out there who I respect who at least teach along this principle even if they do not specifically mention the Kuhn Kuhn. Sifu Mark Phillips out of London. He's always moving in. Sifu Adam Chan. He's always moving in. Izzo Wing Chun mentions pressure a lot. Doesn't focus on moving in as much, but at least the pressure stays on. Uh, Sifu Fu of uh, Enter Tai Chi, Enter Shaolin. He talks about, you can't back up. You can guide the opponent past you or in toward you. You can have a retrograde, say, hand motion to some degree, but you can't back up. If you were backing up, the opponent is marching forward. You are receiving all their pressure, stopping that momentum and changing the direction 180 degrees is difficult. I've said in a couple of classes and I've put it up on the video, if you accidentally or by mistake receive the punch and you back up, that's just license for the attacker to move in. If anything, you want to roll off of it and fall into them. Make them back up, or at least stop. Hold their position. Too many people approach fight like sparring. Let's prolong it. I'm gonna move in, tag, step back out. Move in, tag, and every time you do that, every time you move in, tag, and step back out, you are crossing your opponent's, <coughs> your opponent's strike zone twice. There is a space where you do not want to be, where the opponent's punch or kick is at its maximum strength. There are two places you can be where that's not the case. Outside of the strike zone, inside the strike zone. We, very few of us like getting hit. We're afraid of getting hit. So we tend to favor the outside the strike zone. And if the fight is not yet on, that is perfectly legit. Hands up, step back, and then we don't need this fight. Look, I'd rather buy you a beer than fight with you. A little verbal jujitsu. Being outside of the fight, the strike zone. But if the fight is on, if there isn't a darn thing you can do to stop it, playing outside of the strike zone so that you have to move across it in so you can get your hit and then back out. Well, quite frankly, you're doubling the odds of getting hit on the way in and on the way out. <clears throat> what the Kuhn Kuhn says, meet what enters, cover, stick to it, and escort it away. It's he hits, stick the arm, follow the arm. They've got to retract. Most people punch, the automatic has a retraction. Stick to that arm, follow it in. Get on the inside of the strike zone. Get to where your Wing Chun one inch shock power, one inch punch, one inch strikes, short strikes, whatever you want to call it. Takedowns, whatever. Get to where that works 
but you're not constantly crossing the strike zone. There are people, I'm a big fan of Guru Nisanto. He's never mentioned Kunkuit. It's not necessarily a big thing in JKD, but when he does his collie, it's about meet the stick, stick to it, move it away, move in. It is the cue and cue it. I, there are instructors out there, whether they talk about it or not, they utilize it. But there's a heck of a lot of people who don't even have a clue. And they think self-defense or martial art is about playing like you're in a ring, playing for the crowd, elongating the fight instead of just move right through. Uh, in addition to emphasizing the cue and cue it, I like to tell my students, Wing Chun is about going home. And what I mean by that is the bad guy, the bad person, is between you and home. Home may actually be in the other direction, but the get bad guy's in your face. He's trying to stop you or whatever. So he is between you and getting home. Your job is to go home, which means you've got to go through that guy. If you can't defuse it, if you can't verbally jujitsu your way out of it, if the fight is on, it is through the bad guy. Jiu-Jitsu people like to say the way out is in. That's a cue and cue it right there, man. That's it right there. The way out of this mess is in. Go. Don't wait. Don't go in and come back. Go in and come back. So anyway, I can't answer my students' question directly. Why don't people use it? Why don't more people talk about it? I, I, I don't know. I know my instructor, Sifu Francis Fong, who I'll be seeing this weekend at a seminar. I was required on a written test to recite it. That's how important it was to him. Does he quote it every class? No. Does he do it? Yes. And you should too. I hope you all are having a great day. Keep on training.